Hey, it's always a pleasure to talk to one of my favorite people in the world. A guy I've known a long time here has done a lot in the musical community here in Pittsburgh. He's Rich Angler. If there was a concert over the past, oh, 50 years or so, Rich most likely booked it. Brought us a lot of great music here in Pittsburgh, and Rich has some special things going on right now. Rich, how are you doing, first of all, today, bud? Uh, great. Thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate uh, talking with you, and uh, you're always the best. I, I love what you do. I listen to your show all the time. do appreciate the kind words there. Now, a couple of years ago, you put out a book called Behind the Stage Door, just interesting stories about uh, acts that have come through Pittsburgh, shows that you have booked, the ups and downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you will. But there's exciting news. Available starting today, which is Tuesday, September 13th, this is going to be on the big screen. Could you tell us how that came about, Rich? Wow, it's a crazy story. You know, I I wrote the book in... uh... And I sold thousands of books, and I was really happy and sold out of books. Now I have books for sale again. Uh, and I get a call in uh, 2019. Some uh, major company uh, producer uh, reads the book and flips out and loves it, said, calls me and tells me that he wants to make a movie out of the book. But first, he wants to do a documentary on the book in my life. And I'm going, huh, are you kidding me? I'm so humbled. I, this is this is just for real. So they started for the last three years. They have been fi- filming because uh, uh, there's been some hiccups because of the uh, COVID. They couldn't get into Canada, get uh, Alex Lyson from Rush, and they couldn't get Lou, Lou Graham from Foreigner and uh, so many people that they wanted to get to be in the documentary. But now, now that everything is is running, it was able to get finished a few months ago, and um, a national company picked it up right away. Uh, Gravitas, one of the biggest distributors in the United States, and uh, it's it's coming out. Um, uh, uh, people can go to my website, richengler.com, and see the trailer for the doc. And uh, the film is, I think, a hundred. Um, one hour and 20 minutes long, and it's, it's, it's going to stream worldwide on September 13th, like you did say. So um, I'm just excited and humbled that, that, that I, can't, I can't believe all this. It's been a whirlwind since uh, they finished the documentary. Let's go back to the beginning. What was the first concert that you ever booked? Well, believe it or not, I've booked over and promoted uh, over 6,000 concerts and events. And the very, very first one, believe it or not, was Blue Oyster Cult. I had a chance to, in I think it was around 1970, 71, that I got a call from a New York agent uh, and said, hey, listen, I know you're trying, wanting to start promoting shows. I have this band, Blue Oyster Cult. I can get them to you for $1,100. I said, well, Wow. Uh, yeah, I want to do it. So I was able to find this second floor above Roth Rugs in McKeesport, McKeesport PA. Oh and I did this and I, you know, I regretted it because we had two flights of steps. We had to lug up uh, Blue Oyster Calls equipment. And, uh, but the show worked out. I, I don't think I made any money, but I didn't lose any money. But that was my very first show. You mentioned 6,000 shows that you have uh, produced or promoted over 53 years. So your first show was Blue Oyster Cult, okay? What were you, like nine years old at that time? Because, you know, Rich, you don't age, dude. I mean, come on. I, you well, were nine when you booked your first show, right? Okay. Oh, don't, don't look at any old pictures, please. <laughs> Hey, uh, you and I, one time, we sat down uh, and uh, tried to figure out how many shows that you booked at the old Three River Stadium, and uh, it was 20-plus. I believe we came up with 23. Some of the biggest name artists of all time 
came and played thanks to you and taking on chance on bringing this music to Pittsburgh. Any remembrances of some of those shows that you did at Three River Stadium? Yeah, probably the most memorable that, you know, Rolling Stones, uh, uh, Genesis, The Who, uh, Pink Floyd, but probably the most memorable would be Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen, 65,000 tickets sold. That was the largest a gathering ever at Three River Stadium, in which we held the record for years and years and years. And now uh, uh, then Garth Brooks came a few years ago and broke that record because he put the uh, stage in the round and he was able to get more than 65,000. But anyway, um, on, in that show, uh, uh, Bruce was all excited. The band was all excited. We we did their green room the backstage up to be like a um, – uh, a sports thing. We had uh, pool tables in there, ping pong tables, and uh, electronic games and everything. They were they were just having a blast. So it was time for Bruce to go on stage. So uh, I walk out with Bruce and the entourage, and and uh, Bruce Bruce uh, goes on stage first. So he walks up. Crowd is going crazy, and the band go, goes out. And he starts the song "Born in the U.S." I said, dun, 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 dun. Little did he know that two of his guys are still playing ping pong at the beginning of this song, <laughs> and they hear it, and they they run like the devil was chasing them. <laughs> but they get on stage after about the about the uh, halfway through the first verse, and <laughs> um. And I, I never forget the look on Bruce's face whenever they finally got on stage. But uh, then something very monumental happened after that. Bruce, after that show, never ever went on first again. They hired somebody to hire, to to make sure that the band was all on stage, and then <laughs> Bruce goes on after that show. Believe it or not, in this documentary. And again, it's available for streaming today, Tuesday, September 13th. And you can find it on Apple TV, iTunes, DirecTV, Verizon, Fios, and Frontier Communications. It's behind the stage door. So let me ask you, is there a show that you booked and said, I am going to make a killing on this show? And it really didn't happen. Well, there are a lot of those, but I the one that sticks out, Unfortunately, um, I still uh, I'm still in in uh, uh, shock that that it was it it, it didn't work out. Uh, it was the Monsters of Rock, and I think a lot of parents, whenever they he hear the Monsters of Rock, they didn't want their kids going to see the Monsters of Rock. But it was Van Halen, uh, Scorpions, and Metallica. Metallica was actually oh a relatively yeah. new band that time mm -hmm. uh didn't have the drawing power that they have today uh and over the years but uh so i go on sale i needed forty thousand people to break even okay so it's selling 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 i do 30 at the end of the day i do thirty-two thousand people now in the big picture anything that does thirty-two thousand people and and grosses whatever it grossed at that time everybody mm -hmm. should be making money and jumping up and down at this is great not me i was devastated i lost two four hundred thousand oh, dollars four hundred thousand dollars that day and oh. it was a kick in the in the back of the pants i was barely wow. able to keep the company afloat uh i was able to pay all the employees to stay on and 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 work and I personally and my partner, Pat the Caesar, at the time, we did not get a paycheck for one year. We couldn't make, because it took us that long to get back on track. It was it was devastating. You'll see that in the documentary. And, and uh, again, richengler.com, and you can watch the trailer. And I, I guarantee to everyone listening right now, I guarantee that once you watch this trailer, you will want more. 
it's just amazing. You had people like Peter Asher, uh, Alex Lifeson uh, of Rush. Lou Graham, Lou Graham, uh, Danny Serafini, uh, founding member of Chicago and, and uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, and, uh, guys from Sha Na Na from Woodstock. I mean, it was it's it's, it's a, there's a lot of notoriety in there, and uh, I, I'm I'm just praying everybody likes it. Richangler.com. Is it true? Okay, let me ask you. You were talking about the monsters of rock with Van Halen. Did Van Halen demand that brown M and M's were removed from uh, their dressing room? Absolutely true. Oh, um, no. okay. fact. In fact, my the the my my uh, assistant at the time, not Ed Travis Terry, uh his assistant, uh, called me up and said, "Rich, are you aware in M and M's there's two color browns? Which which color brown do I take out?" I said, "I'd t- if to be safe, I would take both both color browns, the light browns and the dark browns, and also why they did that. It's not because." They were they were being goofy. They just wanted to make sure everybody was reading all of the documents, all the writers, all the contracts, and going over all the details. And they knew if the M and M's were in there that somebody did not read the writer thoroughly. So it was it was kind of a, 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 a wink of the eye test to see to see who was following orders as promoters. The brown M and M's, a true story in the writer, confirmed by none other than Rich Angler. Rich, I wish you all the luck in the world behind the stage door, the documentary coming out. Again, everyone could find it starting today, September 13th, on Apple TV, iTunes, DirecTV, Verizon Fios, and Frontier Communications. And as always, you could go to your uh, Rich's website, which is richangler.com. Angler, spelled E-N-G-L-E-R, richangler.com. And I got to tell you, if you go there, you're just going to be amazed by some of the photos that you have on that website, too. Find out more about the book, Behind the Stage Door. Find out more about the documentary. Always a pleasure. Well, Steve, thank you. And the listeners, keep on rocking, baby.